Hello and welcome back. In the last video, we talked about this setup here. This is the STM8S001J3 and an ST-Link three wires, and we ha have a debugging interface to a microcontroller. We installed the embedded workbench from IR IAR um, with the Kickstart edition of the compiler. Let me just real quick plug this into the computer. Um, so we made a working project uh, and we confirmed that we can download our files and uh, and start and stop the processor and debug but now we want to do something with the code and um, the problem is we don't know any definitions or we don't have any definitions of any pins of any registers of any functions of anything uh, luckily we have what is called the standard peripheral library or at least ST provides one. So if we navigate to the ST webpage, st.com, we can search for standard peripheral uh, library. Actually, we've just, yeah, you can see I've searched for it before. So we just search for standard peripheral library. For all uh, families of the ST processors, we have a, a standard peripheral library. We just find this one. This is the STM8S. And, and download this. You'll get a zip file. You have to register and log in before you can get the file, but you'll get a zip file eventually when when you have been through that. And let me just real quick go through uh, what is inside uh, that library. So we have um, a folder structure. We have three folders here uh, and a few uh, help uh, files. Utilities is a uh, for the uh, evaluation board that comes with this uh, family of microcontrollers. We're not going to use that. Um, in the libraries, that is the actual peripheral libraries. So inside there, we have some subfolders and include folder with all header files, a source folder with all, uh, with all the C files. So for each type of peripheral, we'll have a different um, uh, include uh, fi or file to include and if you go to the source folder here you can see that we actually have no less than six different timer uh, files so they have different capabilities and depending on what you need and what uh, is implemented on your specific chip you can choose to include one or more of these so and the last folder here uh, inside let's just yeah is a project file uh, folder and inside that we have a, a full template so you can start your project uh, based off of this template. Uh, there is a, an embedded workbench project. You can just double click this. I'll just show you how to set, set the project up uh, because you might need that someday. In the project is also a lot of examples. And that is examples that show you how to use, for example, the AD converter, uh, CAN bus, a transceiver, GPIO, I2C, uh, watchdog, SPI, timers, UART, you name it. So there's at least one example for for one or for each peripheral. Oh, hopefully there should be. So we'll just take the symbols one. That is the GPIO here. There's a, a folder called GPIO toggle, and inside that we have uh, some different files here. We have uh, an STM8S underscore conf, the configuration file, uh, and some underscore IT, this stands for interrupt. And interrupt is uh, we have both a header file and a C file. We also have a main file, this is our, our actual program. If we open this up in a notepad, we can see, we just close it so we only have this one. We have a, a lot of um, comments here and then some definitions uh, and a and then some symbol code. Our main loop is not very big, but um, but it, it does contain a working program. So we'll just use this as a, a work um, to, to place our, or base our project uh, off. So back to the IDE here, we can right click here and say go to um, open containing folder. So we can go directly into our, our project. Let me just clean this up a bit in, before you see it. Uh, I was trying something off uh, off screen here. So this is all the files that are included right away. So what we want to do is we want to tell the um, or we want to enable this peripheral library. So uh, we go back to the libraries here and we have this uh, standard peripheral driver. We just copy the whole this whole folder over uh, to our project. But now we need to tell the project that these 
uh, folders are actually there. So we can right click here and go to options. We can go to the C slash C++ compiler and choose the preprocessor tab. And we have this additional include directories. We, and we can just add, we can just navigate to the folder that we just included, all the way to the include folder here, select that folder and add the, go back one folder and select the source folder as well. So like this, we have two, we have the include folder and the source folder. Press OK. And um, now the um, if we go back in and navigate to these, for example, the include here, uh, we have access to all these files here. Um, so so they are known to uh, we can we can find them when we're compiling when we also want to uh, include them in the actual project. So we can uh, right click here and press add and add files. And we can navigate directly to the, um, the peripheral driver folder, the include folder here, and we just select everything. I know uh, it's a lot of files, but we'll see how it goes. And we go back and find the source folder here and select all of those. And just press OK for this. Uh, OK. We have a few of uh, these that have uh, have red dots, and they contain errors. So we'll remove them in a in a in a minute. Let's just try to make this and see how it goes. So we have eight errors. Uh, the first one here is a fatal error, uh, and we can double click this, and it will throw us directly to where the error is. And it actually says, please select first the target of the STM 8s slash a device used in your application. And if you navigate to the top of this file here. Uh, this is the stm8s.h file, the main header file. And we actually are, are told here, please uh, uncomment uh, the type of processor that we're using. The problem is that this is a read-only file. So you can right click up here and say file properties and remove the read-only tab and press OK. When that's done, we can just remove this comment section here. So now we have defined the simple the stm8s001. And this is going to be used. You can see here that it's also down here. So now this is defined and we won't get this error anymore. And now we can, um, or oh, this symbol is used for enabling and disabling the, all the other peripherals. So let's see how it goes. Now we've got eight more warnings. Okay, so let's take the first one here. Cannot open source file stm8s underscore conf. Okay, so we are obviously missing a file. Let's go back to our project here. And uh, if I have open another um, browser, let's go to our example with the GPIO. Remember that we had this configuration file here. We can just copy that, that and we'll also copy the underscore IT and IT.C uh, and dot H. Let's copy this and insert it over here. Um, we can now go to our project and say add files and we can add these three files to our project as well. We'll try to make it again. Still have eight errors. Cannot open source file stm8s.conf. Okay, but it should be there. We have it right there. Let's see here. Uh, so it says it's not available. Um, that is very interesting. The interesting thing is that this error comes from the, the CAN module or the CAN per peripheral driver and the CAN is not even uh, in here. So it shouldn't be um, defined. And all, actually you will see that all the uh, red markers here uh, points to some files that is not included in, the, in our processor. So I will just remove these uh, like this just press control while we're selecting these and press delete here and we we'll remove them from the project and then try to make it again. That solves all the errors. Um, I know that this is probably not the complete right, completely right way to do it, um, but at least it solves our errors. So now we have access to everything here. Let's try to include this, uh, the main header file, the stm, stm8s.h. 
and see if that compiles. Still zero errors, that's a good thing. Okay, so let's go back and see what is uh, what is done inside the, um, the GPIO toggle here. So we have two definitions here of a GPIO or port and pins. We we'll just copy that like this. And also we have a GPIO in it. And, um, and then inside our while loop, we do some toggling with a delay. So delay, um, that is a function that we have defined ourselves down here. Um, we need to copy that uh, first. That is of course inserted uh, outside main. Uh, and in C, we need to define our functions before we can use them. So we define that up here. That's a function prototype. Let's just try and see if this still doesn't have any errors. So now we just copy the whole main like this and insert it in instead of the while because this contains a while loop. Let's try to... Okay, so GPIO H is undefined. Um, that is set up in the GPIO port here. Let's try to right click and go to definition. There is no definition. So we can just select another port. Um, I'll just use GPIO E and see if I can find that definition. Yes. So now we can see you have we have definitions for A, B, C, D, E and F. Okay. So clearly we are using a much smaller chip than, uh, than the example was written for. So let's see if we can find um, the data sheet for the STM 8S001 J3. Uh, I just find a PDF off screen here and let me show it to you like this. Uh, I think it was page 24. The, um, that's a bit further back. So this here, this is our pinout. Uh, for example, we want to flash uh, an LED on port PB4, for example. Let's just make sure that PB4 uh, is indeed, um, you can see we don't have high sync, so we cannot, maybe can, we cannot drive um, an, an LED, so we can use another port. Let's just go for um, pin seven, PC3 here. So we'll just configure port, uh, port C3 as an, as an output. Okay, so we, no, that is port C like this, and it's pin three. We just remove all of these definitions. Now we only have one pin. Let's just try to do it like this. Okay, so we we know we don't have a definition for assert failed. Okay, let's go back and see if we can find that assert failed function that is here. Let's just use this, insert this, like this, and try to compile again. Works. Let's try to run this. Uh, okay, it's looking for gpio.c. Let's just uh, see if we can find that folder. Include uh, gpio.c there and use this file. Usually that shouldn't happen. Okay, so now we are uh, waiting in our main. Let me just put a breakpoint down here. So now we will init uh, the LED port. We'll write the reverse and then we'll go to delay and then break right away. So now we have uh, changed the state of the GPIO port here and uh, we have break, uh, breaked, um, we are waiting at the break point. So now we should be able to go to our registers. Um, let's just do registers one. Um, like this, and we want to find port C. And I'm not completely familiar with uh, which uh, register we should be looking at, but we should have one register that should be changing uh, every time we, we come around. So let's just uh, try to say uh, go. Uh, sorry, we should, um, we should break here. And now we can see here that the this uh, input pin value register, or the output pin for that matter, this is changing, that is a highlighting in red. So as we go to the next breakpoint, you can see that output register uh, three here 
is changing. So we are changing uh, pin three and that corresponds directly to this ODR3. So next time you can see that it switches. So I didn't have an LED put attached to this, but if we attach an LED to, to our uh, mic control, you can see that it switches just as it should. But also this is a, a demonstration of just how nice it is to be able to break the processor and watch the registers directly. So we can go directly to, um, we can see the CPU registers. You can see, uh, for example, all the internal settings of the AD converter, uh, all hardware peripherals uh, that have registers. We can we can watch these, and we can uh, even we should even be able to manipulate these. So we can just write a zero here, um, and then next time we break, we'll change back because we are using this GPIO underscore write reverse. Um, so this is a very very simple example of how to use this standard peripheral library. I know the video is maybe a bit messy. I'm sorry about that. Um, I just really wanted to get this out. So to show you how easy it is to get started, you may or may not have uh, get a few of the errors that I'm seeing here, but I was checking the, the price for this. So um, about half a dollar for the chip itself and is it three dollars for the st link three dollars um for for the debugging device that will enable you to debug uh, and and work with these controllers that is so incredibly cheap i know it's a it's a chinese uh, clone this one but it works uh, and it, there are even projects out there that reprogram these for other purposes so you should definitely get one of these actually it comes with the cables for the three dollars um so the only thing you need to, to, to do one of these setups here is a breakout board for the SOIC chip, uh, which should also be pretty cheap. Um, so yeah, get one of these and get started programming. And uh, yeah, and now we can, u now we can use a, a proper IDE, or at least you can, um, you can start working with it. Uh, the embedded workbench is, is capable of a lot of stuff and you can, um, you can do a lot of uh, fancy stuff and uh, you can set breakpoints, multiple breakpoints up and and this just helps so much when you're debugging code. It, it just gets so much easier to see, oh, I can see that the, the pin is not set. Uh, in the Arduino, you need to flash an LED or write some to, uh, something to a serial port. We can just look at everything inside the chip here. It's amazing. So, um, yeah, get an ST-Link and get a ST microcontroller. It doesn't have to be the smallest one. You can get any uh, and try this out. It's really not that hard. Okay, so uh, until next time, thanks for watching.